Hello and welcome to the Crown Hills Kitchen. Today we're going to be making spicy burgers and homemade cobs. But firstly, before we start of any lesson, we must make sure that we clean our work surfaces with the antibacterial spray. And that will remove any germs or any bugs that have been left on the work surface. And it's important that we do that every single time. For this recipe, what we're going to do first is we're going to make the cobs. Now to do this, we need to make the bread. Now, when we make bread, we need to leave it to prove and that means we need to let the yeast activate within the actual ingredients and for it to rise. So with this, we need flour. We will require a tablespoon of oil. We need half a teaspoon of salt. Now it's really important when we do this, we don't overfill it and we make sure that the teaspoon is flat. To do that, we can just run our finger over the top you could do that over the sink or just into a waste bowl, but it must not be a heaped teaspoon, it must be level, so that's really, really important. And we also require a teaspoon of yeast. And again, it must be nice and flat, and we'll pop that into the bowl. Along with these ingredients, we also require some warm water. Now, it's important that it's the right temperature and that it's not too hot, because otherwise it will deactivate the yeast. If it's too cold, it won't actually activate and it won't rise, which is really important. All I'm doing now, just with a butter knife, I'm just stirring the ingredients together, and I'm just creating a small well in the centre of the bowl. That's a little hole in the middle. And I'm going to pour all of my water in at once. I'm going to trust myself that I can measure accurately. With my butter knife, I'm now just going to stir it in large circles. just want you to mix it in large circles. You don't need to do anything fancy at this stage. And what will happen, it will start to get a bit tougher when we're doing it, and it will start to stick together and form a dough like this. Okay. When it starts to stick to your knife, take, get rid of your knife, and this is where we use our hands. That's why it's really important to wash your hands also. I want you to squeeze the dough together. I want you to imagine that the dough is a dishcloth, okay? And what you're trying to do is to clean the bowl, and that works really well, while also pressing and using your knuckles to get all of the pieces of dough that are left in the bowl. And if you do this really successfully, and you press it, and you imagine you're cleaning the bowl, you will end up with a bowl that's relatively crumb-free and clean. Don't get rid of that bowl, don't put it in the wash bowl, because we do need that in a minute, so I'm just gonna keep that to one side. What we now need to do, I just want to wipe my surface because I've got a little bit of oil on there. We're now going to do something called kneading. Not that I knead the dough, it's very different. There's two ways of kneading. The first way is using your knuckles. And what that's doing is using these parts here, you stretch the dough, don't tear it, just stretch it. Pull it back and turn it 90 degrees, okay? So stretch it, don't tear it. Pull it back, turn it 90 degrees, okay? Now that's one way. The second way of doing it is actually using the palm of your hand here. So we stretch, pull it back, turn it 90 degrees. Again, stretch, pull it back, turn it 90 degrees. Now I don't mind which way you do it. Practice, have a go at both, see which one you're more comfortable with. I find it really difficult to do it with my knuckles. I actually prefer the palm of my hand. Now when you do it fast, it looks like this. Now I'm not asking you to do it fast, I'm asking you to do it accurately, so please practice when you're doing this. See which one you prefer, because you'll only know by trying. Now you will need this for approximately eight minutes or so. And what will happen is that your dough will go really, really soft, okay? And to test when your dough is complete, what you will do is we'll stop. You'll press the dough like this. Now if it bounces back, as in it returns to its shape before you pressed it with your finger, that tells me that the dough is done and that you're ready to move on to the next stage. I've only done that for about 30 seconds, so that means it's not done so I need to keep kneading. Okay, once you've finished kneading and you've checked that it's okay, what you'll need to do is put it back into the bowl and we need to cling film the top of the bowl. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to do something called proving, okay, which I mentioned earlier. And what this does is we'll leave the dough for as long as we can, roughly about 15 minutes or so if we're using the fast action yeast, and we'll leave it in a nice warm place. So on top of a cooker is always good. If it's really sunny, stick it near the window, but make sure it's nice and tight and sealed. We'll leave that. The dough will double in size, 
and then we can come back to it. Okay, so now that our bread has been left to prove, as I said, we're gonna leave that for about eight to 10 minutes maybe, 15 if possible. We're now gonna make the burgers. Now for the burgers, we'll need a bowl. I've got everything set up here. I'm firstly gonna focus on doing my onion. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure we peel the skin of the onion, okay? Which is nice and easy. Pull that off and put it straight into my waste bowl. It's important as always to make sure that your chopping board stays nice and clean. Now the best bit with the onion, it's got cutting lines on it. It tells us where to cut. So we can use those as guidance when we're actually chopping our onion. On the reverse, if you can see, there's a little dark patch here, just near the root side of it. That's got a gas in it called ammonia. Now, if we cut the root off, that ammonia can escape in the classroom. And I have obviously explained about this before, so don't cut the root off. We always cut the opposite end. So what we're gonna do, using the bridge method, we're going to make a cut in the middle of the knife firstly, and then using the claw, I'm going to put my knife and cut along those lines all the way along and then I'm going to work my way towards myself, leaving a centimetre gap from the root because I do not want to cut into the root. That's really important. Then I'm going to turn it round, and again, using the claw, I'm now going to cut in the opposite direction, but we're going to make cubes. We're going to cut the onion, we're going to dice it into really thin, small pieces of onion. We don't want big chunks of onion into our garlic, into our burgers, sorry. That's really, really important. So I'm just gonna do that. The rest of that we don't need, and we get nice, small, fine pieces of onion. Now straight away, I'm gonna put that into my bowl so that it's nice and clear on my chopping board, and a nice and fine. That's really important. We do not want big chunks of onion. The next bit is the garlic. Again, we've got two sides to a garlic. We've got this flat bit, and we've got this tail bit. We're gonna cut the flat bit. So with my knife, I'm just going to cut the flat bit and then that allows me nice and easily to peel the garlic a bit like a banana. It should make it easy. If you do struggle, just use your fingernails, that should pull it off quite simply and then you end up with your garlic like this. We then need to use a garlic crusher. Now this part, you've got the removable part that goes in here. Pop the garlic on the inside, fold it over. If I take my bowl, squeeze it really hard. And then from the bottom, just use my knife and scrape away from you. That's important. Scrape that part. And then if you open it up, this bit's got a bit stuck. There's nothing wrong with that bit on the inside. It's just not gone through. Just use your knife and just get the rest of it out so that it's nice and clean. The next part, now this is choice really, but we're going to put some chili in to give it a bit of a kick. Now with the chili, we don't need the stalk, so I can cut that part off. On the inside of a chili, you've got the seeds. If you want your burgers really spicy, leave the seeds in. If you don't want to have it too spicy, but you do want it to have a little bit of flavour, we can remove the seeds. And we would do that by cutting a, a slice down the centre of the chilli, opening it up, and then we would squeeze out all of the seeds. So we could just use our knife to scrape it. I'll just show you on a section so that you can do. Using your knife, just scrape the seeds out like this and they'll just come onto your knife and then you can get rid of them, okay? If you want to have it all in, all you're going to do, again, is using the claw method, you're going to cut it into very fine circles, really, really small. I'm not gonna to put too much chili in mine and I am gonna leave the seeds in and we're just gonna put a couple of pieces in like this just to make sure that it's nice and small into here, okay? What we then require is a teaspoon of passata. And that's just, again, gonna give us a bit of flavoring. Then we're gonna add our meat, okay? Now, I don't need to cut it or prepare it because it's minced meat. I'm going to place that directly into my bowl. I'm only gonna use, this is quite a big batch, so I'm only gonna use roughly two thirds of it because I don't need that much. And I'm just gonna move my chopping board out of the way. Okay, and I'm just gonna break that up a little bit with my hands, just so that I know I've got enough in there. Next, I want to use some herbs, and I'm just gonna do a sprinkle of some fresh herbs, and also a bit of a pinch of salt, just to also give us some flavoring. And the final thing, because it sounds like a lot of ingredients, we're gonna add a tablespoon of egg. Now this egg will help us bind everything together. Okay, so we've got all of those ingredients in there together. Now this is the fun bit. You now need to use your hands. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just breaking up the meat so that it's all separated 
and I'm just mixing it and combining it with my hands with the onion, the garlic, the chilli, the salt and the herbs all together like this and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to tease it together so I'm just about applying a little bit of pressure to make it into a ball of it will look like a ball of dough, but it's a ball of meat, okay? And it's going to stick everything together. Don't worry if you've got a little bit of onion just sticking on the sides of the bowl. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Just try and get it into a big ball of meat like this. It'll make it a lot easier. I know a lot of people don't like getting their hands in, um, but it's a lot easier to do it this way than in a food processor because that'll make it a lot smaller. So I've got my meatball here. What we're then going to do is we don't need a knife, again just use your hands. We're going to split it in half, so we end up with two. Those halves, again, we're going to split those into two. So you should end up with relatively four similar size balls of meat. Okay. Now on my baking tray that I've got here ready, I'm just going to move this to one side. I've got two pieces of parchment paper and one has been folded just to create a little ledge there. That's to prevent any meat juices going onto the cobs that I'm going to place on there in a moment. So, with your ball of dough, pick one up. I called it a ball of dough, ball of meat, okay. I want you to make it into a round ball like this. Pop it on the baking tray and using your three middle fingers, I want you to press down one way, like this. And then on your other hand, get your other three fingers and press down that way. And then that will create roughly a little burger, okay. So I'm going to repeat that. Again, make it into a round ball, stick it on my tray, three middle fingers, that way and that way. Don't worry about them being a perfect circle, okay? This makes them look more authentic, okay? As if you're in a restaurant, you want proper burgers. We don't want the ones that you get frozen out of the supermarket. So I'm gonna press those ones in there. This one's a little bit bigger, okay? So they're gonna stay on my baking tray like that. So now that I've made my burgers, what I now need to do is to make the cobs. So as we've left our bread dough to prove for about 15 minutes, we'll know that it's done because what happens is you get some condensation on the inside of the clink. So I'm just going to pull this out and you can smell it as well. Just going to keep it here. All we're going to do, this has been kneaded, it's lovely and soft now. It's very, very soft as you can tell. All I need to do is this. We're going to get the bread dough and we're going to twist it. So I want two cobs, okay? Now you're probably thinking, miss, you're making four burgers, how have you got two cobs? I'm going to do double burgers. But what we're going to do, all I want you to do is to smooth the bread dough and tuck it underneath like this. So you've got a nice smooth texture on top. doesn't matter about underneath because that's going to be flat on the baking tray, you want to see. So move that over like this, place that on the baking tray. Again, do it with this one, spread it over and just tuck it underneath, okay? And they will go on there. Now these will go in the oven for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. We're not actually waiting for the bread dough more so on this. The thing that we're most important to check is the burgers. Now with the burgers, we spoke about this before, but we need to use a temperature probe. To know if our burgers are cooked, we will make sure that they're at 20, 75 degrees. Okay, that's really important. So we'll put it in the middle and check. If they're done, we know that the bread will be done because the bread doesn't take as long as the burgers, okay? So when we put them in the oven, it's very important as always, make sure we use oven gloves, put them in and out of the oven, and I will show you the finished outcome when they're done. So now that my burgers have come out of the oven, I've made sure I've used my temperature probe and I've checked that they're at 75 degrees and they all are. What I do is put them straight onto a wooden block, which is here in front of me. And now what we need to do is we need to assemble the burgers. Now remember the tray is incredibly warm. The bread dough is still quite warm. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use a tea towel. I'm going to place that onto the, the work surface, put my cob on there, and just to prevent my hand from getting too hot, I'm just gonna put the towel just over the cob like this so that I can hold it whilst I'm cook cutting. This is a bread knife. I'm gonna cut my cob in half like this so that I can get my burger in. Now if you're wanting to put any salad inside, like lettuce or tomato in your sauces, this is when it'll all come in now. So you'd have to prepare that whilst your burgers were in the oven. I'm going to use this little slice here. As I said to you, I'm gonna make a double burger. So I'm gonna put one there, and then I'm gonna pop another one just on top, like this, okay? I haven't got any salad in mine, but they do go quite large, as you can see. And what I'm gonna do straight away, is I'm just gonna get a piece of foil and I'm just gonna wrap that up to keep that nice and warm in there. I'm gonna do the second one just to show you. 
again just use my slice pop these in here any toppings or anything you've got in your sauce your lettuce your tomato cucumber maybe not cucumber but you can put anything in there using the foil again take a piece of foil pop that on the foil wrap it up to keep it nice and warm and that is how you make spicy burgers with homemade cobs